A lot of problems in organic chemistry involve looking at differences in boiling point and acidity between different compounds, molecules, and functional groups. And there are a lot of rules for how to analyze this, and some people like to go and just memorize a sort of general trend of acidity and boiling point, but I think it's better if we can lay it out on a plot like this and then understand the factors that influence the boiling point and acidity. And keep in mind that this is not going to provide the answer to every question that they ask about that, but rather give you some general trends that you can understand. And so what we've done here is we've set up a plot with boiling point as the y-axis and acidity as the x-axis. And notice that low acidity means a high pKa and high acidity means a low pKa. Remember that whenever a pH, a pKa, any of those is low, that means it's a strong acid. And if the pKb is low, that means it's a strong base. So low pKa equals strong acid. And what we've done here is simply laid out the functional groups that you might encounter in organic chemistry according to these two metrics, acidity and boiling point. And before I get into this chart, I want to really emphasize that this is all else being equal. A lot of things influence the boiling point of a compound, for example. If you have an alkene with a double bond and one of them is cis and the other is trans or something like that, then those will all influence things like boiling point and other factors like that. So we're saying all else of this is equal. We're assuming that these groups have the exact same number of carbons because every carbon you add will end up resulting in a 20 to 30 degrees Celsius increase in the boiling point if you're within a normal range of let's say 1 to 10 carbons or something like that. So adding carbons increases the boiling point and a lot of other factors can as well. But we're assuming here that we're dealing with something with the same number of carbons and the only difference between them is the functional group. And we're not going to make a big distinction about cis and trans alkenes and cyclic versus linear alkanes and things like that. But what we can do is look at how the boiling point and acidity change when you're changing only the relevant functional group. And so we'll see some trends here and then these trends can help you form the foundation for understanding what factors to consider when you're being asked about acidity or the boiling point of various compounds and functional groups. And so the first thing that you'll notice here is that there's a pretty direct correlation here between the acidity and the boiling point. Ones with low acidity also tend to have fairly low boiling points. And the ones with the high acidity, like the carboxylic acid, also have fairly high boiling points. There are two I put over to the side, benzene and amide functional groups. And the reason I did that is just because there are some little nuances that make it unclear uh, to whether you're looking at something that is highly or not very acidic. So I kind of removed them from the acidity part of this chart and only am focusing on the boiling point here. But the first key is to notice that you see a correlation of increasing boiling point and increasing acidity. And there's a very, very important reason for that. Both boiling point and acidity care about polarity because what you're really wondering with an acid is when it gives up a proton and accepts those electrons, does it have somewhere to put those electrons where they won't be immediately reactive and grab back another proton? A good acid is something, according to many of the definitions and, and a functional definition you can use, is that an acid is something that's very good at giving up a proton somehow holding onto those electrons and not grabbing another proton back immediately. And so things that are more polar tend to have some way of handling that negative charge. Maybe they have an oxygen that's comfortable holding the electrons or maybe they have various other groups that allow them to better handle those electrons. Obviously, things like electron withdrawing groups also help promote acidity because they help take those electrons and withdraw them within the structure so that they're less likely to react. But in general, something that is polar 
will be more acidic because a polar compound often has a place you can put those electrons where they won't be immediately tempted to react and grab back that proton. And so you see the more polar the groups get, the more acidic they become. And as we've mentioned, electron withdrawing groups promote acidity, resonance and conjugated systems promote acidity. There are a lot of things that do. But in general, what you see is more polarity equals greater acidity. Boiling point also follows very similar rules. And the reason for that is that boiling point is when you go from the liquid phase into the gas phase. And in order to do that, you have to break apart the intermolecular interactions between those liquid molecules. So several molecules are within a liquid and they will remain within a liquid as long as they keep interacting with each other. Something that makes them more interactive and increases the strength of those intermolecular forces is having more polarity. If a molecule has a positive part and a negative part, then it will very likely be drawn to the negative and positive parts on its neighbors. And you'll see a lot stronger interactions when you have things that are more polar. And uh, you'll also notice that as you add more carbons, boiling point goes up. But polarity is very, very important when you're looking at boiling point because in order to boil something, you have to break those interactions between two molecules. And polarity, having a positive and negative part of a molecule, makes it more likely to have a strong interaction with its neighbors. And so thinking about polarity is oftentimes one of the best ways that you can go about solving organic chemistry problems. So polarity, as you move up toward carboxylic acids, you see things that are becoming very, very polar. And that is something that correlates with an increase in acidity and in boiling point. So that's a really crucial distinction to make. Again, this is with all else being equal, the same number of carbons. We're not considering other functional groups or other substituents that we're adding, but just in general, carboxylic acids are very, very polar, so they have a high acidity and a high boiling point. We can take this even a step further. We can look at these groups here and look at groups that are capable of hydrogen bonding. Now, there is uh, something about the amino group, and if it's an amino group that has an NH, that is also something that can allow for hydrogen bonding. But not all amines have an NH. Some of them are NR groups and things like that. But what we definitely know is that carboxylic acids with their OH interactions and alcohols with their OHs, those are things that are very, very capable of hydrogen bonding, as are many amide groups which have the NH and that they also have a carbonyl group, a CO group. And so there's a lot of potential for, car for hydrogen bonding there. Now, if we are going to look at these, the ones that are definitely capable of hydrogen bonding happen to be the top three groups in this boiling point table, with all else being equal. Things that can hydrogen bond and are polar have very high boiling points. So I'm gonna say polar, and hydrogen bonding. Things that are polar and can do hydrogen bonding have very high boiling points because the polarity increases those intermolecular interactions. And also, the hydrogen bonding is another thing that does that very exceptionally. And so things that are polar and can hydrogen bond tend to have the highest boiling points within an, an environment. If you're doing a problem about a distillation or something like that, look for those intermolecular forces and always consider the hydrogen bonding that can happen there. The next group that we get to, and again, it's a question of how much polarity is enough to consider it polar versus non-polar. And what I'm gonna do here is I'll draw a line right around here, maybe somewhere in between benzene. And all of these groups, your ketones, your aldehydes, your beta dark dicarbonyls, something with a carbonyl C double bond to an O, and another one of those in the beta position. Uh, esters, which is an ROOR functional group, and amino groups. These are all ones that are polar, but we don't see as much hydrogen bonding. It's possible with the amino group that we can have some, but in general, there's going to be less hydrogen bonding. And this whole cluster in the middle here is the 
relative boiling points of things that are polar but aren't very likely to hydrogen bond. And so you'll notice that they're still going to be higher than these ones, which are the non-polar groups. These are a lot of things with CH bonds that tend not to be very polar. But they're going to have higher boiling points than the non-polar ones, but they're going to have lower boiling points than the polar ones that are also capable of hydrogen bonding. And so don't take this as the law for boiling points of things. There are a lot of factors that come into play. Other substituents, electron withdrawing and electron donating groups. Perhaps if you have a conjugated or resonant system, the geometry of different things. But all else being equal, this is the trend that you see. You see very, very polar functional groups having very high acidities and high boiling points and you see ones that are more polar than, than these other ones, but not something that can also hydrogen bond, those tend to have boiling points somewhere in the middle range. And then the non-polar functional groups are the ones that have the lowest boiling points overall. And this is a really, really good foundation because once you start to think of it in terms of this way, polar with hydrogen bonding, polar but not much hydrogen bonding, and non-polar, then you're starting to think about the major factors that influence boiling point and acidity. Remember with boiling point, what you really care about is how high does the temperature have to be? At what temperature do you have enough heat energy that you can break those intermolecular interactions of a liquid and enable them to then enter the gas phase with enough kinetic energy to stay there? So boiling point is all about how strong are these intermolecular interactions when you're in the liquid phase. And polarity is huge in that because if you have a polar molecule, it will be drawn to other polar molecules and it will interact electrostatically quite strong, quite strongly. And then the non-polar groups are less likely. You only see things like van der Waals, London dispersion forces, and other things like that. But you can clearly see how polarity relates to these distinctions. You can see how hydrogen bonding influences boiling point. And then once you start looking at it that way, then it becomes more straightforward in order to understand the various factors that come into play. Yes, geometry is a big factor. Yes, every carbon that you add to something within a normal range will result in a 20 to 30 degrees Celsius increase in the boiling point. But so often with organic chemistry, you can simplify the discussion a lot by just looking at your functional groups and looking what those, at what those provide the molecule. So boiling point, it cares about those intermolecular interactions. Acidity, oftentimes the big question you're asking there, is how good is it at giving up something and then managing those electrons that it kind of picks up in the process? How well can it hold on to those? And if you start looking at boiling point questions and acidity questions in that way, recognizing that there are some caveats, then this really opens the door to having a much higher expert level of understanding of organic chemistry to the point where you'll no longer need a chart like this, but instead you'll have ter internalized the general principles that relate to boiling point, acidity, and many other factors in organic chemistry.